and welcome to this week's preview show here at Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Talent's Chris Temple joins me as we look ahead to another big weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We look back at that fantastic 3-1 win against Everton. We'll also be joined by our Head of Sports Science, Dan Hodges. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to this weekend's game against Southampton at St Mary's. But first, we'll start back at that fantastic 3-1 win against Everton here at Vitality Stadium. Let's remind ourselves of the goals. In front of the south stand, Blue Boots places it down, takes a couple of steps back, right hand up in the air, it's left-footed towards the six-yard area, arriving at the back post, and there is the header from Callum Wilson from Point Blank Range. Two goals in two games for Wilson and Bournemouth have the lead in the Vitality Stadium. There's space now for Seamus Coleman over on that far side, the Everton right. Nice ball down the line, right edge of the box where Charleston is waiting. First time cross in towards Calvert Lewin. It clips the underside of the bar. It beats Aaron Ramsdale. Rico still with the ball in his hands. Places it down, steps away from it. Fraser low, right footed, deflected off of Fabian Dell. And past Jordan Pickford, Bournemouth back in the lead. Fraser off the bench. He has the goal that has restored Bournemouth's lead here at the Vitality Stadium. It is Bournemouth 2, Everton 1. There's a tackle from Billing on Richarlison and ball over the top. Wilson is in behind here. Slots it past Jordan Pickford. A brace for Wilson. That's three goals in two games for him. Bournemouth extend their lead. The Cherries 3-1 up against the Toffees at the Vitality Stadium. Well, what a win that was, Chris. It was a, a, a brilliant performance all round, wasn't it? Much needed, I think, as well. And the manager called for a big improvement from the, the games before the international break. And against good opposition, by the way. I mean, we were stood here last week, you know, talking about what a good side Everton are, how well they've recruited, and the money they spent and the challenge they might make on the top six this season. And, and to be honest, I mean, they had a couple of spells in the game. Um, but, yeah, it was exactly the sort of performance results, you know. It always feels better when the sun's out as well. Everything sort of came together, didn't it? A couple of goals for your number nine, Callum. Wilson, you know, continuing to sort of upturn his form this season. So, yeah, so many things went well. Um, and, of course, Lewis Cook's performance, I mean, caught everybody's eye. So, yeah, it was a, a really good day all round. Three much-needed points just to, um, you know, lift, lift themselves up towards the, the middle part of the table heading into a big game on Friday night. And going into the break, it, it was 1-1 and that next goal was so crucial. And in all honesty, it looked like it was probably going to be Everton that, that got it. Yeah, and again, I think if you can hang in there in those spells and, you know, Aaron Ramsdale had a couple of good sort of saves, straight interventions didn't he as well uh, and had another another good game um, which again live on the box won't won't have hurt his sort of uh, future ambitions too much I wouldn't think people will be starting to to notice him all of a sudden um, but yeah and as you say the third goal was very important um, an element of fortune from it you know Joshua King it was a brilliant run um, you know powering his way halfway down the field and he's the first to admit you know I've actually spoken to him ahead of the game this weekend and he's not happy out on the wing he, he doesn't want to play there particularly um, but his game is he, he admits himself his game is suited to it in certain certain ways. He's not, you know, he's not your Ryan Fraser who's necessarily going to sort of trick his way past people, but he's going to use his pace and power. And we saw that, you know, bombing down the far side of the ground, eventually getting fouled as he will so often do, moving at that sort of pace. We see it with you know Ryan Fraser so much as well, don't we? Um, and yeah, played a big part in the goal. And then the wee man, you know, that wasn't I don't think what he was trying, but. He was very, very quick after the game, I gather, to make sure that was going to be his goal and not a Fabian Delph own goal, which I think was probably just about the right decision because I think it was probably curling inside the post anyway. Um, and then obviously Callum finishing off and once that third goal goes in, that's the, you know, although two goal margin can sometimes be a sort of a false comfort because you can sort of switch off mentally a little bit and um, think the game's won. Um, ultimately, they saw it out pretty comfortably. So, yeah, it was a, a good second half once they got that second goal um, and ultimately a, a comfortable win against a good team. 
And, and a word on Lewis Cook. I don't think any of us really expected him to start. We were sat here last week saying, you know, will he make the bench, will he not? And then he goes on to start and it was a brilliant performance from him, wasn't it? Yeah, last week we said, you know, that I had a hunch he might be on the bench just because of the way he'd come back. And the obviously he had played that secret game behind closed doors that no one knew about. We didn't know about that either. So, um, yeah, it was a, um, a, such an impressive comeback. I mean, against good opposition, um, it wasn't, you know, with the greatest respect, it wasn't a Hampshire Senior Cup comeback. It was a Premier League comeback straight thrown in. Um, again, we were here last week saying, how do you get Lerma, Billing and Lewis Cook into the same team? Well, the answer is you take one of them out. Um, Jefferson Lerma, I know he'd done a lot of travelling, um, you know, to for the international break to play for Colombia. So that, in a, in a way, sort of gave Eddie the, the option or the, the, the chance, I guess, to rotate it around a bit. And how nice he's got. Eddie spoke after the game about the fact he, he hasn't really had the ability to rotate good players around and, and give good players a rest. Um, Jefferson Lerma pretty much had to play, you know, most minutes of every game last season. And at times, you know, maybe felt the pinch of that a little bit. Um, but the Lerma billing partnership's been good. Lewis Cook, you know, he was absolutely outstanding. Just, you, I mean, you can't purr enough about his comeback and just, you know, going into a couple of challenges, he looks stronger. I mean, his legs look like tree trunks all of a sudden. He's obviously worked very hard physically on that comeback as well. Uh, and just the, you know, the, the creative ability, the drive he gives the midfield as well. I mean, there's, a, there's good reasons to be really excited about the, the different dimension that he can bring back to the team that maybe some feel has been, been lacking in that central midfield area. It really it looked, it looked like he hadn't been away, didn't it? And, and another player that, that shone last week, yet again, Aaron Ramsdale, he made some really big saves, didn't he? Yeah, and again, uh, crucial opposition, live on the box, you know, spotlights on, um, you know, got Steve Cook out of a, a hole, didn't he, just behind us after an under-hit back pass as well. So, yeah, Aaron Ramsdale, another one to, to shine. And I think we should mention Jack Stacey on his Premier League debut up against the likes of Richarlison and Alex Awobi and other people, you know, running at him at times. And even Diego Rico, you know, a great assist for Callum's third goal. A lovely Brilliant. little ball. Yeah, beautiful ball. Yes, the Everton defence were AWOL, but it was a beautifully cushioned ball that, you know, Callum Wilson didn't even have to take a touch. He could just hit it first time. Um, so, I think... You know, it, was, it was nice to read Diego's thoughts on the website this week as well about, you know, this is my time to take my chance with other people injured. He's realistically the only natural option, although Lloyd Kelly is very close and could well feature this weekend. Um, so maybe he realises, OK, now is my opportunity to stake a claim and make Lloyd Kelly work hard for that, that shirt that Charlie Daniels and, and obviously Adam Smith have vacated. So, um, yeah, maybe hopefully Diego can build on that performance as well and, um, and start to make a real impact at left back. And now after the weekend, seven points, it's a healthy position to be in, isn't it? Yeah, good, good position to be in. The table set up nicely for Friday night, you know, uh, Bournemouth and Southampton ne neck and neck, ninth and tenth, um, same points. Pretty sure same goal difference as well, I think. So everything is literally side by side. And yeah, having a couple of wins in the column after five games um, just looks a, a whole lot better. Three points makes a massive difference. Um, and I think, you know, we, we look at the early signs, you think of the Villa away win and you're thinking, OK, this is a good start to the season. And then it just, you know, tailed off for a couple of games. Obviously, City was hard and Leicester are hard games. Um, so the Everton points are, you know, really useful points and probably make up for the fact that we didn't beat Sheffield United here in, in a way. Um, but yeah, Southampton next, um, some big games to come and obviously Burton on Wednesday night. So a good chance to keep the ball rolling with a couple of quick games. Absolutely. Well, we mentioned Lloyd Kelly just a moment ago and he played his first minutes of the season on Tuesday night in the Hampshire Senior Cup. He got himself on the score sheet with a lovely team goal. It's Will Dennis now. Looks to get an attack going from the back. Dennis finds Kilkenny. Charlie, obviously Gavin scored a hat-trick. He's not really known for scoring many goals, but just tell us how he's been working on that side of his game. Yeah, like I said earlier, he's always working hard. He's always in the gym, you know, working on his finishing and working on his working on his game. He's been with the first team, obviously. Um, that's probably improved him in a sense, you know what I mean? He's, he's training a lot. I'll just interrupt you here as Lloyd Kelly drives on a goal! What a finish! Back from injury, and he's on the score sheet. Lloyd Kelly, brilliant drill shot. Low into the bottom corner, no chance for the goalkeeper. And Charlie, again, we mentioned about the fullbacks being key to the play. A great finish from Lloyd Kelly. Well, what a great team goal that was. Now, as you can see, Chris Temple has just nipped off to get his bacon sandwich, but we have been joined by our head of sports science, Dan Hodges. Dan, thank you for joining us. It's been uh, quite the week with a few key players making returns. It must have been quite a rewarding week for you and your staff. It was a good week. It's obviously all about the players and the fact that they're now back out on the pitch is, is obviously going to serve the team in the best shape possible. And for you, it's been been such a process since you know Lewis Cook it happened 
back against Huddersfield last season and, and Simon Francis again on Boxing Day. How mentally tough has it been for them to you know, work their way back? The, the guys deserve all the credit, all the praise. You know, they're the ones putting in all the hours, uh, psychologically preparing for the journey that's ahead of them in their rehabilitation. They've worked so hard and I'm really pleased to see them back out with the team again. And just talk to us about that journey because it's not been easy, has it? Uh, certainly not been easy for them, no. Um, they're, they're the guys that are working, you know, with, with physiotherapy support, uh, with strength support, nutrition, sleep. You know, they've, they've been away and worked with external experts as well. And I think all that has culminated in what you saw, Lewis, Lewis returning for the team and, and hopefully Fran are not too far away. And you say they've been away. How much has that helped them, you know, having that change of scenery and, and going somewhere else? Oh, it's massive, you know, the, the, the physio team and the medical team will, will all sit down along with the sports science team and, and plan out how the rehab's looking. Uh, what points they can go away and, and for them to go away, away from the scenery, go and work with external experts, go to another country, have some heat, it really helps them in their rehabilitation. And for them, they've obviously, you know, they've, they've been in the treatment room at the same time. Have they helped each other throughout the whole process? Yeah, I, I think so. You saw, you saw that. Um, they're, they're really close friends now. Uh, they, they push each other through. They've worked hard together in the gym and the altitude chamber, on the pitch with the coaches. You know, they've, they've really helped each other. And for them, when, when Lewis Cookie played a full well, his first start last week and, you know, he played 60 minutes and came through unscathed. Simon Francis again 60 minutes in the under-21s game on Tuesday night. For you to see them come through unscathed, that must be a relief. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's obviously, that's the most important thing, coming through unscathed. But obviously we're tracking them physically as well, um, looking at what they're producing over sort of different periods of the game, five minutes, ten minutes, and both of them have really projected well. Um, so they've, they've come back in good shape and they're producing what the team needs, to needs them to produce. And we've had, you know, in, the, in previous years, Callum Wilson's done his ACL as well. Have those guys looked to Callum for, for advice? You know, when they first did their injury, was he much of a help to them? Yeah, you, you see that. We've got a very, very close-knit squad. Um, they're always texting, always chatting, always together. And, and you see Cal, Cal's, a, Cal's been a big help to those guys for sure. And you see, you know, they're, they're such a close-knit team. And you can see how happy they were for Lewis last weekend, having had such the game, quite the game he did. Yeah, exactly. Every, everyone speaks about how close our team is. And it, and it really is true. The guys pull each other through and, and they're really close as a group. And the more kind of short-term injury, Lloyd Kelly, he made his his first game game back on Tuesday night, that must have been pleasing for you to see and, and pleased for the lads to see as well. Yeah, again, Lloyd, he's been working hard. Must have been, you know, it's tough for him getting injured in pre-season, but he's worked hard to get himself back where he needs to be now. And hopefully that's, that's the start of a good career for him with us. And for him, yeah, as you said, you know, he, he came here in the summer and then before the season even starts, he picks up an injury in training. That must have been mentally tough for him to, to come through. Yeah, I think it was. I think that's actually his first injury and it was obviously a bit of bad luck in the, in the way that it happened, but he responded really well and now he's working hard to get back to where he needs to be. Perfect. Well, Dan, thank you for joining us. I'm sure we all look forward to seeing how those players progress in the next few weeks. Now then, our attention turns to tomorrow's game against Southampton at St Mary's. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in this morning's press conference. Obviously different stages of their, their comebacks, but great to see Simon back after so long. Uh, and Lloyd too on the pitch after his recent injury, so uh, the squad's getting stronger. We're trying to build momentum in the campaign. I think that's hugely important home and away. You want to get that confidence going into every game that you can win. And certainly the, the last result we had will do us the world of good. Sunday was a really nice moment for him. Um, a lot of hard work went into that performance. And I said after the game, I think the most impressive thing is physically, he didn't really tire. And that's all down to the way he's approached um, the running aspect and the, the fitness aspect. Yeah, very good team. I think they've improved under their new manager, um, implemented his philosophy. Um, certainly very hard working team. They've got undoubted quality as well, I think. So we know it's going to be a tough game. Um, we enjoyed the games. We've, we've had some really good battles in the Premier League against Southampton. Some successes, some, some disappointments. We've enjoyed going to Southampton to play these games. We haven't won one yet in the Premier League and we're desperate to do that. Well, that was Eddie Howe in this morning's press conference. Chris, there's no doubt about it that Eddie and, and his squad are going to be very much up for this one. Yeah, uh, I think I remember, remember standing here with you ahead of the away game the back end of last season saying that every game had been pretty drab between Southampton and Bournemouth so far and we were due a, a thronker and we got one at um, the back end of last season with that 3-3. So, yeah, I, I can't imagine it's going to be the same sort of game, uh, quite as open because the pressure was off at the end of the season. Um, last year it was end-to-end. -end. Bournemouth you know, came, went behind early, came back to, to lead, threw it away and then had to equalise later on and could have won it as well, which would have been absolutely ridiculous, really. Really. Um, but yeah, there's no doubt they'll be up for the game. I mean, Eddie will be will say the right things and that he knows what it means to the fans and things. But ultimately, their job is to keep it the same as any other game. Um, I, I, I like the I like 
the, the style Bournemouth have, it does suit playing away from home at times. And I think the big pitch at St Mary's and the way Southampton play will be conducive to Bournemouth being able to show some of their best stuff. Um, but Southampton, are, you know, they're much improved now. Um, they've made a couple of astute signings over the summer. Um, Jennifer scored a great goal against Sheffield United last weekend, one of their um, big money summer signings. They brought in Danso at left back, who missed that game, um, missed the game last weekend rather with suspension um, after getting sent off against United. Uh, and Southampton will probably be quite keen of, you know, a bit of relief from from home fixtures because they've had Liverpool and Manchester United in their first two, and they've got Chelsea next at home. So um, for, for Bournemouth, they'll be looking at this and saying, okay, well, at home we need to get some a uh, three points on the board, play well against Manchester United to get a point with ten men. Um, but yeah, so Ralph Arsenal's had a summer um, to sort of shape his squad, and although he hasn't made, you know, he only made two or three signings, he's Shea, Shea Adams as well, um, we should mention from Birmingham, he's still waiting for his first goal. So they've they've sort of recruited, I guess, minimally but smartly, um, and he's now had an opportunity to ink his style on the team. They play sometimes this sort of four-two-two-two formation, which always seems sort of peculiar, um, but you know, uh, they, they are flexible as well. They've been playing wing backs recently. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a tougher game than it was back in the last season. And we've never won at St Mary's and Friday night under the lights, there's no better time and place to do it, is there? It is set up for a, it is set up for a cracker. I mean, Friday night, you no, know, Friday night football is, uh, is you know, it's, I guess it's extending the weekend, really. It gives everyone a chance to go and do something else on a Saturday, watch another game somewhere else or spend a great Saturday, you know, celebrating a great result if you can get one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant, you know, um, a nice short trip for the supporters making the journey there as well. It'll be a, be a good atmosphere, that is absolutely for sure. Uh, yeah, and I, the stat of never having won there is one that I know I said to Eddie this morning, would you rather correct the Man City stat where you've never got a point against them or the Southampton stat where you've never won there? And he, of course, said he wouldn't choose one or the other, um, but he'd like to correct both. Uh, so I think, I think Cherry's fans would, would like to, to go and win there just to, you know, have a, some sort of bragging rights. But let's not forget Bournemouth have finished above Southampton in the last two seasons in the final table and the season before only finished behind them on goal difference. So, you know, overall, Bournemouth have had a much more solid couple of years than Southampton have had with a bit of transition with all their changes of managers. So, um, but yeah, it'd be nice to win there for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, Bournemouth, we talked about, you know, winning, at, beating Everton last week, 3-1. Southampton had a good result themselves away at Sheffield United, which is not an easy place to go. No, that was a good win. Sheffield United obviously played a bit of the game with 10 men after Billy Sharp got, uh, came on and got sent off pretty much straight away. Um, but I think, yeah, Southampton will be in the same group this year as, you know, th last year they had their battles against relegation. This year, Southampton will be in the same cluster of teams as Bournemouth chasing whatever it may be, eighth, let's say, eighth, ninth, tenth, that, that sort of region of the table. Um, I fully expect Southampton to be much better overall this season. They've had a tough start fixture-wise, um, but that was an impressive win last weekend away at, at Sheffield United. Um, but, you know, scoring goals has been Southampton's problem. Um, last year, they, they couldn't really score particularly at home, they had real problems scoring. Danny Ings, obviously, who we know so well here, has been in and out of the team's had a few injury problems which have blighted his career. Um, so Shea Adams led the line. The likes of Shane Long is a bit out of favour now as well. But, you know, Buffal, who, who was away on loan last season, has come back and seems to be given a sort of a second chance by, by Hasenhutl. As I say, Jenepo, um in as well. So, yeah, creative players, a solid midfield with Hoybier and Romeu, you know, who will have a good central midfield battle against Lerma, Billing, Lewis Cook, whoever ends up playing. Um, so, yeah, good battles all over the pitch. And I think of people like Ryan Bertrand, who, you know, he can't even get in their squad. There's talk of a sort of a mystery ankle injury. He's had a couple of great games here. He, when he gets the ball at left back, bombing down the left hand side, the former Cherries loanee, of course, I always used to be pretty scared of what he could do, but he can't even get in their squad at the minute. Um, so whether anything's gone off behind the scenes, I'm not sure. But yeah, Southampton, much more, much more powerful squad. Um, Going to be a tough game. And in terms of our team news, it's it's looking a bit more positive than it hasn't re has in recent weeks. We've had Lewis Cook back last week, Simon Francis playing his first minutes on Tuesday night, and of course Lloyd Kelly as well. Yeah, choices all of a sudden now. I mean, Lewis Cook will be a cert, I'm, I'm sure, in there. So again, how does Eddie accommodate that? Does um, does Lerma come back in, or you know, Eddie's quite loyal with a winning team usually. Um, so does Lerma miss out away from home? Do you need Lerma's steal in there? Um, I think you probably do. Um, but how do you get him in? Because the new setup last week with Solanke and the team, which I think was well deserved as well, an opportunity to, to come in because he's done well. So he's sort of taken Joshua King's number 10 role. And as King will tell you, you know, he's been farmed out on the wing um, on one side. And Ryan Fraser obviously missed out the other day. So there, there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are difficult choices for Eddie and how, how he approaches it. Um, Lloyd Kelly's getting closer. I think he'll be in the squad. Um, 
Simon Francis, by the way, mentioned for him as well. He, you know, obviously came through that game an hour in midweek in the Hampshire Senior Cup that we saw earlier. Uh, he he thinks he's got a chance to play on Wednesday night in the Carabao Cup at Burton, which should be you know an ideal sort of game for him to come back into. So, yeah, as you say, people coming back in to, to put pressure on places. Absolutely, and, and just ahead of the weekend, <laughs> it's that time. I don't even need to ask you. I wasn't far away last week. I said two one. It was you three said one. Two one. It's pretty close. Do I get any points for that? No. Mm, no. Not Sorry. Nice come on, today. Manchester. Bet. Come on. Um, <laughs> What do I think this weekend? I'm, I'm feeling quite positive, actually. I am feeling positive. I'm going to go Cherries 2-1. Cherries 2-1. Yeah. There we go. Well, if you are over 18 and you want to have a go at predicting the score for this weekend's game, just head over to Mansion's website and you could be in with a chance of winning a signed Bournemouth shirt. Last week's winner was Graham from Verwood and he won hospitality tickets to our game against West Ham. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much for joining us and make sure you keep an eye on all of our social media and our website for the latest updates tomorrow night. Bye for now.